Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday prayer meeting. May I request everyone to please stand as we sing hymn number 51. I know whom I have believed. On the first verse. Ready? Sing. I know not what wondrous grace to me at me why and words Christ in love redeemed I know I have believed and I persuaded that he is able to keep that which I'm committed unto him against the day. Verse 3. I know the Spirit will convincing men of sin. Revealing Jesus through the world creating him. But I know whom I have believed and I persuade Request Brother Anthony Mensa to lead us in opening prayer. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, it's a great privilege for us to come to your presence to worship you. Father, we pray that as your word is coming, you will stir our hearts, you will stir our instincts, so that whatever is coming, we will be able to to understand and understand it well. Father, we continue to pray that let your blessing be upon us. Continue to strengthen our spiritual soul and continue to give us your word so that we'll be able to know your word and go out and preach your word. Let whatever is coming proceed in our heart and let it be a, a let it be as a a word that will, that will make us be courageous and that will make us to be, to be faithful in your house. In this I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good evening. Welcome to our live stream of our services, uh, our Wednesday prayer meeting. And let's take this opportunity uh, as a wonderful pri privilege to pray for each other. So we have many people to pray for. And of course, uh, never stop praying for our pastor for his full recovery. Let's pray that he would be able to uh, recover fully and to gain strength uh, from his operation. Uh, one uh, item of prayer that you, may, you must never forget, the full healing um, of his wounds from the operation. So, and also that he would be able to gain strength and appetite. And also, please pray for Mom Sherry and Brother Dan as they take care of uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor in, the, in this pandemic and for the protection uh, from COVID. And we thank God for the opportunity by which uh, we are gathered here together, even though we are online, to worship God in spirit and in truth. And Let's not forget to pray for those people who are dealing with illnesses. Some are dealing with cancer, some are dealing with uh, diabetes and kidney problems and all other host of diseases that they may have. So some may be dealing with COVID and some whose names I cannot mention, but please, put, uh, please have them in prayer that God would fully recover uh, people who have gone through COVID that um, they would really fully, uh, fully recover from this illness and uh, you, ju you just need to mention any one, any of our brethren who have gone through this uh, illness. And of course, let's continue to pray for comfort for the 
for the Valenzuela and the De Assis family for the loss of brother Jody Assis. So we uh, last Sunday um, we had service there, last service there in in their place, and also other services um, during that uh, time that he, that his body, his remains was there in Arlington. So please pray for continuous strength for the family. We know that Brother Diasis has received the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior, but please pray for the strength and comfort and physical um, strength and uh, spiritual spiritual uh, um, spiritual strength that they need at this time of, uh, of pandemic. Okay, so let's remember uh, those uh, those prayer items and let's uh, take uh, five minutes to pray for the requests that were mentioned a while ago.
Heavenly Father, as we come to your throne of grace, Lord, we praise you for your greatness. We praise you, God, for your grace and your love that you have, you have revealed to us in your relationship to us, but most of all, through the Holy Scriptures. Help us, O oh God, that uh, even as we are having this service, O oh Lord, that our, our songs of grace will be acceptable to you, and even as we, our hearts, O oh God, may be in tune, should be in tune, tune to you, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray that, uh, for our, that you would hear our prayers, that you would um, heal Pastor Boyd of his illness, <coughs> That you would also, Lord, um, uh, protect him from the um, from COVID, O oh Lord, and continual strength for him, O oh God. We ask you, be and Lord, as I pray for uh, for those members who are who are dealing with various uh, health issues. Some of them, Lord, are dealing with cancer, and it's very hard at this time, O oh God, to deal with that disease. And for also, Lord, for those who are having problem with kidneys and diabetes and other hosts of diseases that, that are in our prayer list, list, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you will touch them, oh God, uh, with your healing hand, and I pray, oh God, for your financial provision upon them. Lord, I pray for those people who have lost their jobs. We have lots of our Filipinos who have lost their job, and I pray, oh God, that uh, among our members, Lord, that you would... Uh, Give them, oh Lord, one, one sources of income by which they would be able to support their family. And, oh Lord, I pray for the comfort for the Diasis family. May your comfort and your grace abound in them, oh God, at this time of need. And, Lord, I pray for, uh, for uh, those that are preaching, that your, that your uh, Holy Spirit will always guide them, even as they would preach, oh God. And I pray, Lord, that even as we are going to hear the message tonight, I pray, oh God, that, um, that the words that, that he will preach, oh God, will reach our hearts and our minds, oh God, that it will uh, change our, our word according to your image. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's sing once again another song. Hymn number 307, Revive Us Again. Let's sing verse 1 and verse 3. On the first verse, ready, sing. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who was born all our sins and had cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Um, magandang buhay sa ating lahat. <laughs> it's always a joy to be back here and uh, it's truly, uh, I feel uh, full of joy and uh, I'm so happy to be back into church and see so many familiar uh, faces and uh, I really miss you guys and uh, uh, for the last three months I stay with Hannah and it truly, I, uh, the Bible is truly right when it said that whosoever find a wife, find a blessing, uh, uh, I cannot express that, but you know from my face, I'm really happy about that. Um, and again, once again, thank you so much for the opportunity that I could uh, be back here and uh, to share with you the Word of God. Last few weeks ago, uh, we all know that the president was declared that the Manila would go back to the quarantine again. 
But at the same time, he would say, um, we, the government have no more budget to provide for the people who stay at home. It gave them a lot of ans um, answers about that. We're going to get food to eat, and uh, they kind of worry and discourage him about that. So you know that uh, if you put your trust in the government and when they out of budget, they would not, they would give you some discouragement. But if you put your trust in God, He is able to provide. You would never get disappointment because God's prov providence is always on time and he will be willing to provide if you are trust in him. And that is a message I would like to share with you this evening. It concerning Christian and in the time of their suffering. If you have your Bible, please open your Bible to the book of uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 in verses um, 6 to 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 7. Let us read together the book of um, the Word of God. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Let's pray. Father, I'm so happy that you gave me the opportunity that I could uh, be back here. It's always a joy. Uh, I, I'm so happy, and you know that from my heart that um, we thank you so much for all the blessings you have given. I pray, O oh Lord, that uh, may you uh, enable me this time that as I deliver your word. So it's not about me. I'm not deserving. I'm not able to deliver, but it is you who give me the spirit, enable me to deliver the word. May you use my word to be encouragement and also to be a blessing to your people. And also to help your people for those who hears, could able to get the message and can find comfort and also um, can strengthen their faith as they hear the word of God. So may you bless us this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat> Now you know that uh, this epistle was written by um, uh, was by the uh, apostle Peter, and the, the the reason for this epistle was written is is to encourage the believers. Especially, he explained um, the holy council or explained the doctrine of born again to the new converted Jews, and to motivate them to hold fast their holy conversation or their integrity in their daily lives, especially in the day of suffering. Also, that he promote Christian ethics among the unbelievers. More importantly, Peter examines the ethical meaning of suffering as Christian in the evil world. So I believe that in this epistle is divided into two parts. There's many idea or many belief or many uh, th uh, people think about different division in this book, but for me, I believe it is in two parts. The first part is talking about doctrine. He explained about the doctrine of born again into the living hope. And the second part, it fall into uh, sec um, First Peter chapter two, verses um, 11 to chapter five, is talking about the practical, how can you put those knowledge or the privileges as Christian into practice as uh, a Christian in the, the, the life of suffering. And so the passage that we just read there is placed a very important element into the whole epistle in the way that this um, element can enable you how can you are suffering as Christian in the evil world or in the day of suffering. And the, the, the title I would like to share with you this, this time is A Blessed, The Blessed Humble Christian. Why is that blessed? Just simply because they're happy. And only those who are humble Christian, they are happy. Why? Let us learn concerning this. Now, because the key word does appear from verses six to seven actually is linked to verse five as well and the key word you can see there is the word humble 
And that is why you can see this in the title of the message, The Blessed Humble Christian. So let us see that what are the characteristics of this humble Christian? The first, let I share with you three things on this. The first one is they are marked, they are marked with humility. Now, verse 6 is say that humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now, take note, the conjunction word, therefore, there is very important. It helps us to understand what Peter wanted to say earlier. What does Peter want to say earlier? It, it could help us to have a clear picture of what does he want to say in verse 6. And what he's saying in verse, from verses 1 to verses 5, from verses 1 to verses 3, Peter was addressed particularly to the attitude of the elders to the flocks of God. The, the word elders there also is used for pastors. And also from verses 4 to verses 5a, is talking to the, the attitude of the youngers or the members of the church to the elders. And then first verses 5b, from there, uh, Peter was trying to get the whole picture that even though you are the elders, even though you are the members, they take note this, that every one of you must submit to one another. Lest you guys clothe with humility. Why? Because God gave grace to the humble and he resists the proud. <clears throat> now, um, because take note that um, the word, the verb submit there as the attitude of the younger to the elders. It is the same term used the word to subject. So the idea is Peter trying to tell the, the believers that the attitude that you have to submit to one another, it should be like the attitude of the younger submit to the bastards. It should be on that way. And this is clearly that is telling us something that is hard to do. Why? Because you know that we are by nature want to correct others and we often get offended when people correct us. My friend, if we truly understand who we are before God, we must understand that how often that God used the people around us to correct us, to renovate us, to help us to grow. And as long as you understand that, we could realize that everything or anything that God allowed to happen or God allowed anything that is correct you is a good thing. And so as we understand that we have to humble ourselves to submit to one another in the members of the global church, it will help us to grow little by little. Not only so, I believe that this also is talking about those who willingly to serve in the very humblest job in the church, whether it's for cleaning, whether it's for the clean of the toilet or any uh, kind of ministry in the church, um, it's such in the way that it relates to the, the, the humblest activities of the Lord Jesus when he washed the feet of the, the, the apostles. By this opportunity, I would like to say to thank you to those who are minister in the church, even though in this pandemic time, they're willing to sacrifice their risk their uh, safety to come here and to serve to make sure the church is active and also I would like to say to thank you to those who are willing to um, give their offerings though there's also suffer for their need you have to do a good job you have to do a good work keep it on praise the Lord because according to God's promises he will bless you you know let me give you an illustration about this if you live in a family around uh, for 10 members and you come to the meeting uh, to concerning about some issues and you need to solve that, just imagine if every individual of that, those members in that family, they think they are right, what will happen to that meeting? It will go nowhere. If each of them could humble themselves, submit to one another in unity, come with one solution, immediately the, 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 the problem will be solved. Likewise in the church, if every member think they are right, who will be the one who lead? And this is the reason why Peter encouraged every member, you need to submit to one another. Let God guide you through the leading of the of, of, uh, masters. And this is so important. Beloved, may I ask you, 
How are you today? Are you clothed with humility, submitting to one another, ready to edify others by words and actions? Blessed are those who clothe with humility, submitting to one another, and ready to edify others by words and action, for God is on their side. Because the Bible said that God gave grace to the humble. But if you are not doing so, my friend, you stay in the very dangerous state because God stands against you. Then how do you know that you are on God's side? Because you are, have accepted Christ as your Savior, you have put your faith in Him, His blood already redeemed you, He has given you the Holy Spirit, He adopted you into His family, you are on His side. May you, and we are called to follow, to be like Christ. And that attitude, it helps us to humble ourselves before God. And now, take note of that, because this is the foundation as we build the other two, um, two next point. Because humility is the key word here. It helps us understand the other two. As we build the other two buildings, it have to go together. What is the next one? As you see that this blessed, humble Christian, they mark with humility, but they also mark with submission. In verse 6, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. Now, because we know that God gave grace to the humble that resist the brown, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. Take note the phrase, the mighty hand of God. It is expressed the omnipotence of God. As the commentator John Gill, he would say this, he comment on this um, particular phrase. He said that a phrase expressive of his omnipotence, which cannot be stayed, and it would not be madness but to oppose it, and which is able to cast down all the proud and dash them into pieces, as well as to exalt the humble. My friend, beloved, we will be saved and always saved if we are under the wings of the mighty hand of God. But you would be in danger if you are not under his protection. And you know, you are under his side because you are his children. Because Jesus has redeemed you by his blood. But yet, also that we have to notice that the verb humble here, it is an imperative verb. It is a command. It is not a suggestion that if you want to humble, if you want to do it. No, no, it's not like that. Whenever you see that in the Bible, it said imperative command. It is a thing that as Christian, if you are a Christian, you need to do so. It is not a suggestion. And moreover, that Peter is trying, probably I believe that Peter, he trying to prefer the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ regarding in this verse in Mark, in, in Matthew 23, verse 12, and Luke 14, 11. For he said that, for whosoever exalt himself shall be abased, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. A humble servant in the sight of God is to submit to his will as he understood God's omnipotence and to mark a humble servant and to mark a humble servant it is his obedience without murmuring or complaining especially in this time it could telling us that are you an obedience submit to God's will or are you a complaining servant because if you are a complaining servant you would never understand the will of God you would never understand the principle of horizontal. I mean, when you look around, and the principle of vertical when you look up. Because the Bible is very clear that everything, all things works together. It's whether bad things or whether it's good things. It is for our good. That is the principle of horizontal and vertical. Beloved, how are you today? Are you marked with submission to the will of God? Are you willing to suffer in any situation without murmuring and complaining? Are you understand the principle of horizontal and vertical? That all things work together is for our good. 
For blessed you are if you're doing so, for God will exalt you in due time. And in other words, the word, it is in the right time, he will deliver you. That is what his promise. And Peter is telling us, you must do so because God will deliver you. That is the statement of truth. However, don't be a complaining servant because when we came when a word of complaining come out of our mouths, it is when we don't trust that God's will is perfect. Even though in this pandemic time, the blessed humble servant, uh, the blessed humble Christian is marked, what? With his humility. Is marked with his submission. And what else? We already have the building here. And another one is, it had to go hand on hand, and another one is, is marked with his faith. And in verse 7, it's telling us that casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You may say that, brother man, why would you have to say that submission, it had to go hand on hand with faith? Now, take note, the participle verb here, casting, it is linking to the verb humble. It is not a suggestion, another command. It is linking to that as long as you know that you are humble and the thing that you know that you are humble is when you are trusting God. It's go hand on hand. Now, it's very interesting that to know that the word care here, take note the word care in verse seven, it is the word being used by the Lord Jesus Christ in the three books of gospel. It is used in Matthew 13, 22, in Mark 4, 19, in Luke 8, 19, and even Luke 11, uh, 21, 34. It's talking about the cares for this life, the care that for this physical need. You know, if you are the head of the family with two members, you have your, your cares is double. I just got married last June 1 before I just care for myself. But now my care is double because I need to care for her. Just, just, I, I just think like this because, because I will tell you, because just imagine if your family is five members, your cares not only for your kids, but also for your wife. Tama, some madame, I know, somehow understood about that. But the Bible also kept telling us that cast all those that you are bothering you the most. You know, next month we have to find another place to stay because the owner will get back the place. And also I need to renew my visa. And also I need the provision for that. And also I need to uh, register for the relief flight because our parents want us to go back home. But this is unable for us. The point I want to make is, every one of us will have a different thing to worry. Everything, every one of us will have a different thing to have set mind on. But the Bible is telling us that we need to cast all those things. The word casting is the word throw. It's, you cannot throw something if you don't let that thing come out of your hand. It's the idea that you cast all those things on God's hand. And what are the motivations for us to do so? The next phrase telling us the motivation for us to do so, it is for us to know that God cares for us. He gave us his son to redeem us, to demonstrate his love for us. How much more for those things that's bothering us? What he not want us to do when he allowed us to suffer many, many things here to let us know that we are unable to endure, but only him can help us to endure so. My beloved, how are you today? Are you burdened so, so many things? You have burdens, so, your burden is so heavy to carry? Are you suffering of losing job? Are you suffering of losing your loved one, your friends? Are you suffering of finances? Are you suffering of heavy trials? May we come together and cast all our burdens or our anxieties upon God's hand. Let us look into his sustaining grace and trust in his promises because he cares for you and me.
Then I close it this with just a short story. Um, you know, before my mom would used to call me once a month. But from the time of pandemic, and when she knows that in the Philippines, there's around like 4,000 cases, 5,000 cases a day, she called me twice a day. Just to check on me, the how am I, how is Hannah, what are you going to eat, and how can you able to go back home, are you safe, how long are you going to go to the market, what are you eating. It's kind of, she's really, really worried for me, especially when the people around try to ask her, how is him, how can he able to go back. The people there, they just got like that, and just like automatically, I will be the one who also positive. Because somehow when she asked me those questions, I know that she's worried for me and her face is turned sad. But I told her that, mom, don't sad. Don't you think that this is the good opportunity that we express, we show our faith to others, even for your neighbors and your relatives, so that they know that we have a God who really cares, that who we can trust and who will protect us? Believers, don't you think that in this time of pandemic, in this time of crisis, it is a good time for us to show to others about our Christian faith, that we have a God who cares for us. May God bless you, and may you continue to strengthen your faith that God bless you. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Missionary Min. And truly, it is a challenge for us to trust in the Lord and by, uh, by humbling ourselves uh, before God. And to do that, we cast our cares for He cares for us. Maybe you have a care that you like to throw to God today. But first, God wants you to be humble. He wants you to realize your own inability, even in the area of salvation. You cannot save yourself, and because of that, you have to depend on someone. It's none other than the Lord Jesus Christ who shed his blood there on the cross of Calvary so that you would, you would be saved. And once you are under his care, you must learn to humble yourself because you have contributed nothing to your salvation. You have contributed. It's all of God. And now, you, since that you are under his care, let us learn to throw our cares upon him, for he cares for us. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you and we pray, O God, that uh, may the message of the preaching tonight have touched every heart and mind that have heard it. I pray, O God, that you would convict them of their need of salvation, and also that you would convict them of their need of you, even as believers, that they would come to lean on you, that you would humble themselves before you, and I pray, God, that your, uh, that your transforming work in the lives of the people, O oh God, will, uh, will be upon them, will be upon us, O oh God, as we obey your word. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.